Marvin Titterud writes, Neshimes, thank you, Shara, for keeping us up to date. Having two little ones is a big job, so it's good to hear that you are making good use of your talents and working with, with at-risk youth. We stay busy during, doing nothing. My wife is 90 and I am 88. I just, get, I just got a new car and a smartphone, so I am busy with those. Thank you again for remembering us and God bless you both, Marv and Dorothy Titterud. I would just like to say that the relationship that Fund for Leaders has given me with Marvin has been so special. And that his generosity is more than just paying for my seminary education. It was really him saying in so many ways that I could be a leader in the church. That's how it had always been done and that it, that it worked well, but the economics were changing. We had to come up with new ways to do it. And we had the idea, I think it was originally that congregations would maybe contribute to a central fund for uh, scholarships for students at all the, at all the seminaries. And then we decided maybe we need to even go closer to the ground than that and deal with individuals who have a passion who always want for there to be pastors. They may not have a connection to an individual seminary. They may not even know exactly what a seminary is, but they know they always want there to be pastors and other leaders of the church. And it's the kind of thing that they would respond to philanthropically. So that turned out to be a good idea. I think Fun for Leaders is unique and that it is not the educational institution that funds your time in seminary. It is the denomination. And that, it says a lot about the institution's investment in leaders. It says a lot about the ELCA's investment in people who have been doing all kinds of ministry before they get to seminary. I'll be honest, without the Fund for Leaders Seminary uh, Scholarship, I would not have become a pastor. That allowed me to do the thing that I thought God was calling me to and to do what I am passionate and something that I love. I am living out my call for the sake of the world because the church said yes to me. Years later down the road, if somebody's watching this and says, look, there's a Native American female that was identified that year and look what she's done over the past however many years with the ELC, I could be that person. And I'm really hoping that the person that does watch that is a Native American or another person of color that gets inspired by my story. What prevailed was a sense that theological education is kind of foundational to whatever else we're going to do. Yes, we need missionaries. Yes, we need campus pastors. Yes, we need people doing justice work. But we need a way to prepare them. We need a way to identify them and to form them and to keep them connected to the church. So many other things depended on a stream of well-prepared leaders. When we support leaders financially, when we launch them into their first call debt-free, when we put the weight of the whole church behind them and say, you are called, we are setting people up for success.